another Welsh story entitled The Devil's Bridge. There is in Wales a famous beauty spot called Devil's Bridge, not a very nice name for such a pretty place, and this is the story of how it came to be named. In olden times it was a lonely place, a wild ravine where the waters of the river roared and tumbled in a series of waterfalls, and collected in one spot to seethe and hiss in a cauldron of nature's making that has since been called the Devil's Punch Bowl. Old Megan lived near this ravine, and although she was poor and only had one cow, and she was happy enough until the day came when she lost her cow. And what a stormy day that was. The wind howled and screamed in the trees, and the turbulent waters of the river raced and bubbled faster than ever. Poor Megan wrapped a shawl around her shoulders, put a hat on her head, and went off into the storm to search for her cow. The search led her to the ravine itself, where, to her delight, she espied the naughty cow, but her delight soon changed to woe when she realised exactly where the cow was. How she had got there, Megan couldn't imagine. She was on the opposite side of the river, placidly cropping the green grass as if it were all right with the world. Oh, you bad creature, shrieked Megan from her side of the river. How am I going to get you back? Was there ever such a stupid animal as you? The cow looked up for a moment on hearing Megan's familiar voice and gazed across the river at her, her velvet brown eyes soft and gentle as ever, and then she contentedly returned to her tasty meal. Oh my goodness, what shall I do? What shall I do? moaned old Megan, wringing her hands. What's the matter, old woman? said a voice behind her, which made Megan jump. It was seldom that she met any other people at this lonely place. She turned round and saw a man dressed like a monk, standing a few feet away from her. She hadn't heard him, but there, the water was making such a noise that she might have been shouting at the cows, so the sound of his footsteps might have been drowned anyway. The stranger repeated his question, and Megan, pointing across the river, explained what had happened. That cow is the only one I have. I'm ruined if I can't get her back. The stranger came nearer and patted her on the shoulder. Don't worry, he said. I'll get her back for you. What do you think you can, how do you think you can do that? asked Megan. Well, if there were a bridge across the river, it would be simple, wouldn't it? said the stranger. Of course it would, snapped Megan. But it would take months to build and an army of men to build it. And it's hardly likely anyone is going to take the trouble just to rescue poor old Megan's cow. I could do it in a few minutes, and on my own, said the stranger. I have certain magical properties. That's all very well, answered Megan. But I'm a poor woman. How should I repay you for such a service? Just let me have the first living thing that crosses the bridge when it's built, said the stranger, and I shall consider myself amply rewarded. Megan agreed to this apparently simple request, and the man told her to return to her cottage for a short time until he called her back. Megan reluctantly went home. She would dearly have liked to watch the stranger at his magic work. On her way, she began to do some thinking. For old Megan was no fool. She'd noticed something odd about the stranger. One of his feet had shown under his gown, and it had looked like a hoof. Also, she had an idea that his knees were behind instead of in front. Just let me have the first living thing that crosses the bridge, the man had said. Megan began to have her suspicions, and set about thinking of a way to cheat him. By the time she heard his voice, calling her back to the ravine, she'd hit upon a plan. She had a little black dog, and telling him to follow her, she took a loaf of bread which she hid under her cloak, and off she went back to the riverside. Well, the stranger had certainly kept his word. Spanning the river was a high and splendid bridge of fine proportions. There's your bridge for you, announced the stranger proudly, and a pretty good one it is too. Yes, perhaps it is, and perhaps it isn't, said Megan. What do you mean, perhaps it is and perhaps it isn't, said the stranger indignantly. Well, it's certainly a bridge, and it looks very fine, but is it strong, asked Megan. Of course it's strong, exclaimed the man. Will it hold the weight of this, then, asked the old woman, producing the loaf from under her cloak. The stranger laughed. Hold the weight of that, of course it will. Throw it on and see. Old Megan bowled the loaf across the bridge and at the same time whistled her dog and merrily scampered after it. Yes, it's strong enough, she said. It holds the weight of the loaf and my little black dog. And by the way, kind sir, he is the first living thing to cross the bridge. I'll keep my bargain with you. You're welcome to him and thanks very much for your trouble. At this, 
the stranger stamped his foot with fury. The dog's no use to me, he shouted, and at once disappeared, leaving behind him a wisp of smoke and a smell of burning. It was as wise old Megan had suspected. The stranger was the devil himself, and he'd hoped in his cunning to have possessed the old woman, but she was too clever for him. And as she crossed the devil's bridge to fetch her cow, she congratulated herself on gaining such a fine bridge and losing absolutely nothing.